Hello friends, welcome to week five of my quarantine content tutorials. And uh, we are starting off this week by finally learning that classic poi trick, the one and only one that your friends are likely familiar with. That's right, today we are finally learning the three beat weave. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, empowering you through poi spinning and flow arts. And today, yes, we are finally learning the three beat weave. I know a lot of you out there have been waiting a while for this one. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work that they do to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. Okay, so first up, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this is the most ridiculous thing, but I'm so excited about it. I have swapped out the tethers in my Poi for thicker ones. I had quarter inch ropes in here before, and now I have three eighths inch ropes. You know, there's a lot of people out there that will talk about thicker poi tethers as being good for like juggling and contact and everything. My reasons are have nothing to do with the tricks, honestly. The bane of my existence for making these videos for the past month has been dropping out the background in specific frames when I make my thumbnails. So the results have ranged from passable to not so passable to, oh my God, it's so ugly. So with thicker tethers now, hopefully I should have a much easier route to putting together better looking thumbnails for you all out there, yeah? Okay, so with all that said, let's talk a little bit about the three beat weave. Um, this video is gonna be something of an experiment because I have a method for teaching the three beat weave that I think works pretty well and I usually use in conjunction with some other methods. Today, I'm not gonna teach the other methods. I'm just gonna teach this one and see if it will do the job for all of you out there. We've done so much work in kind of uh, trying to spin our poi and thinking of them as being extensions of our hands and arms that I think we can apply the same ideas to our three beat weaves. So in looking at the three beat weave, there's a very, very, very critical piece of information that we need to make sure that we kind of have uh, tucked away in our heads. And that's that the three beat weave is really built around these tic tacs uh, or reels as I was calling them a couple weeks ago when we were learning our tuck turns and our water mills and everything. Um, Basically, you want to be able to swap the poi back and forth across each side of your body. This is about to become super critical. There's literally no way that you can do a three beat weave without being able to do this part of it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and link to the video tutorial that I did really dissecting how this is done if uh, folks out there need to catch up on it. Now, part of the reason this is so critical is because when we do the three beat weave, one of the things that's happening is we're kind of wrapping our hands hands around each other uh, back and forth. And that's gonna mean that we're gonna have to add a beat to that tic-tac because it's a one, two beat move. One, two, one, two, right? Now the extra beat is always going to happen when that hand is crossing over to the other side of your body. So it's gonna be one beat on what we call the native side. That is, uh, since I'm spinning the poi in my right hand, it's connected to my right shoulder, right side of my body. We call that the native side. And when it crosses over to the left-hand side of my body, that's the non-native side, I'm gonna get in one, two beats, one native, one, two non-native. One, one, two, one, one, Two. This is going to feel super duper weird and uh, you're going to be wondering why because it's going to feel very asymmetric, but uh, trust me, there's a good reason for this. Make sure you can do that both with your right hand as well as your left hand. On the left side doing one and on the right one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. All right, and now for something completely different, but trust me, they do connect back to each other. Um, we're going to start this exercise with this very, very curious little uh, visualization that I want you to do. Um, I want you to imagine that there's a little button somewhere along your left arm, and when that button gets pushed, it causes you to turn to your left. And likewise, there's a little button over here on your right arm that when it gets pushed, boom, you're gonna turn over to the right, yeah? So you push the button on your left forearm, and you know, I would 
say that it's a good idea to make sure that you're thinking of the button as being like on the top side of the forearm and boom, turn to the left, push the button on the right, boom, you turn to the right. Okay, so our next step is that we're gonna play around with having our arms twisting around in split time same direction. Now, if we keep them out in front of us in wall plane like this, we're gonna come to a point where um, they're gonna be unable to go any further because the other arm will be in the way. But oh, guess what? Boom, I push the button on my right hand and I turn to the right. Now I can unwrap in split time same direction once again. My left hand goes high, my, my right hand goes low. And as they're wrapping around again, my right hand, boom, touches that button on my left hand, so I turn to my left. I have my right hand go around under, push the button and go to the right. I have my left hand go around under push the button and I go to my left. So just so you can see that like head on and everything, it looks kind of like this, where I'm gonna start here with my right hand on top and I'm going to go ahead and have it go around on bottom. I push the button and go to the right. I have my left hand go around on bottom, push my button on my left hand and go around to the left, push the button to my right, push the button to my left, push the button to my right, push the button to my left, yeah? Okay, so now we're gonna try doing this with the poi out, just a little bit. Um, you see me having the poi kind of coil around my hands as I've been doing this and everything. So now I'm gonna let out a single coil of the poi. So I've got just a little bit showing and everything, and I'm gonna try doing the same thing. I'm gonna let my right hand go around under, turn to my right. I'm gonna let my left hand go around under, turn to my left. Turn to my right, turn to my left, turn to my right turn to my left. Do you see how I'm really just doing the exact same exercise, but that my arms and poi are kind of extensions of each other, like so? Okay, and now it's time to let out the poi another coil, or like another half coil as I'm doing it here, just because the camera angle is kind of limited and everything. So again, I'm going to have my right hand go around under, I turn to my right. I'm gonna have my left hand go around under, turn to my left, turn to my right, turn to my left, turn to my right, turn to my left. There's something really, really, really critical that's happening with the poi here, and that's that we have to make sure that whichever hand is going over top and everything, the poi winds up kind of on the other side of our body. Like, if both of the poi stay in uh, wall plane right here, we're gonna find that they just wrap around each other. So it's really important to make sure that whichever hand is on top is going over past your shoulder. It's the same thing that happens when we're doing like a tuck turn, where it goes behind you for a second, right? So think as it goes over, it goes around behind your shoulder both times, yeah? And it may be that you kinda need to take this one just a little bit more slowly, and that's totally fine. Here's the way I would recommend doing that. Um, when you have the hand go around on top, keep it turning for a second, yeah? So like, as I have my left hand go around on top, I'm gonna keep on turning it as I turn my entire body here over to the right, and then have both hands go, and I'm gonna keep my right hand turning as it goes past my left shoulder here. I'm gonna turn my whole body around, Sweet, my left hand goes over my shoulder, I hang out for a second as I turn, my right hand goes over my shoulder and I hang out for a second while it is above my shoulder and everything, yeah? Make sure that you're getting this critical moment where the, uh, where, where the hand is getting the poi back behind you as you make this turn. That literally is the most critical part of this at this point. So you could kind of come at this thinking, say, I get my left hand over in one, two, three, get my right hand over, one, two, Three, get my left hand over, one, two, three, get my right hand over, one, two, three. Just like that, yeah? And then of course you work your way down thinking, one, two, one, two, left on top, one, two, right on top, one, two. And then work your way down to just one, and one, and one, and one. And of course, when you're counting on ones, you're doing the thing. All right, so what you're doing at this point is recognizably a three beat weave. But if you want to make it look like the three beat weave that people are expecting to see, we have to start making the hands go in smaller and smaller circles. So right now we're kind of doing this in such a way that we're going from our shoulders. So let's instead go from our elbows, yeah? Think we put left elbow on top, right elbow on top, left elbow on top, right elbow on top, but it's the same thing. As soon as you feel that touch on your right hand, you turn to the right, your left, you turn to the left, right to the right, left to the left, yeah? You're still, you're, you're still looking for that button press to make you go from side to side, yeah? And then of course you wanna try and work your way down to just doing these circles from your wrists. You're still turning back and forth across your body as you're doing it, but you're thinking left on top, right on top, 
left on top, right on top. This last step might be the trickiest here. And honestly, if you wanna hang out here just at your elbows and everything, that there's no reason you can't do that. Work to make sure that you can do like 10 of these cleanly in a row and then try doing it from your wrist to see how it goes, yeah? Inevitably, when people get down to just doing it with their wrists, one of the most likely things that's gonna happen is that you're gonna find yourself in a position where only one hand ever wants to go on top. Um, this is a thing called a two-beat weave, which is normally top before a three-beat weave, but like I said, I'm, I'm, doing a, uh, I'm doing an experiment here, right? Now, the thing to bear in mind is if you fall into two-beat weave territory, the way you can always check your work is to go back to doing this from the elbows and looking for that moment when you push the button on your forearm to turn from side to side, right? Um, you, the, the thing that goes wrong when you go down to a two-beat weave is that one of those hands is basically forgetting to do an extra beat underneath the other one, yeah? So I'm getting my left hand under, but my right hand isn't going under right now, yeah? It, it can sometimes be a little bit of a stretch mentally to get it to the point where each hand gets a turn on top. And really just what you need to concentrate on is thinking left over, right over left over, right over, going back and forth, yeah? So as I mentioned before, I'm used to teaching several different approaches to uh, getting the three beat weave down for people. And I'm only really using one of them in this video. If this method did not work for you, uh, you can always go check out the other tutorial that I did that includes all three methods that I know. And I'll go ahead and link to that down in the description. Um, and of course, if this method worked just fine and dandy for you, please let me know down in the comments so uh, I know that I have picked a winner here, yeah? Awesome sauce. So let me show you that from a few different angles in slow-mo. the most popular poi trick of all time. And now hopefully you've got it in your back pocket, yeah? Uh, show me your work with this. Uh, please post video to Instagram and Facebook and tag me. I am DrexFactor on Instagram and DrexFactorPoi on Facebook. And I would love to see your versions of these tricks, yeah? And of course, if you would like to jump on ahead and Granted, the number of things that you can jump on ahead to is becoming a smaller and smaller list at this point. But if you want to move on ahead, if these lessons are not going fast enough for you, you can always sign up for my Spin Poi Like a Rockstar course over on my website at drexfactor.com. Um, it goes into all these tricks, as well as a couple additional ones, which we're probably gonna cover eventually. But for the time being, there's still more stuff to learn there. And they all get delivered right to your inbox. You just need to give me your email address, yeah? Uh, cool, check that out. Pretty please help me get this content out to the wider world. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure that all of your flow curious friends out there get a taste of these videos because God only knows we're all trapped inside and you know we need things that are gonna keep our brains and bodies active and I think poi spinning is great for that. So yeah, if you can help me out that way, I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you're getting anything out of these videos, if you're finding new ways to teach people, if you are learning new things yourself, if it just helps to have these as a grounding thing to get to be able to look at every weekday, consider supporting them over on Patreon, uh, like all these nice folks did. Patreon right now is what is allowing me to do this project of creating a video every weekday, now on the fifth week, Good Lord, um, this is twice as much content as I usually produce in a given week and I've now kept it up for over a month. Yay! Um, if you have the means to be able to support this project, and no judgment if you don't, but if you do, please consider signing up over on patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I pursue in the future. So check that out, please and thank you. All right, so today we learned how to do the forwards weave. Tomorrow, we're gonna learn how to do the reverse weave. That is the version of it where the poi are coming at you rather than going away from you. 
that'll be a fun trip. Join me for that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, good luck and enjoy this one. Peace.